I'm Sebastian Reich from the University of Potsdam. I'm a mathematician and I'm one of the co-organizers of the program. Hey, um, my name is Aretha Tickentrip. I'm from the University of Edinburgh. Uh, I'm also an applied mathematician uh, and I'm interested in uncertainty quantification and inverse problems. My name is Mark Geronimi from the University of Cambridge in the engineering department. And I'm a statistician and one of the co-organizers of the, uh, the program. So the whole theme of this particular program and its title is the mathematical and statistical foundations of future data-driven engineering. Now, engineering science and the engineering professions have always been data-driven. Going back to the great giants of Stokes and Kelvin, they conducted experiments, gathered data, and then defined the empirical laws of elasticity or turbulence and, and so on. But at this point in time, in this point in history, we have technologies which are enabling us to gather data at scales and at rates that we've never experienced before. And that then requires us to develop new mathematics, new statistics, to enable us to answer the questions that this data is so tantalizingly offering to the engineering sciences. So uh, as Mark said, the kind of vast amount of data that we have available today is really opening up a lot of possibilities um, to kind of use new tools in, in mathematics and statistics to really make the most of this data and, and actually use it. And so in terms of the um, mathematics that's involved in this program, it is really very broad because you do need a lot of kind of different tools from different areas to really be able to uh, make the most of the, uh, the data that we have. Uh, so we do have a lot of people, for example, from um, computational um, disciplines such as control and inference and, and optimization, but we also have a lot of people from kind of the modeling sites or people in dynamical systems, fluid dynamics, um, and even theory of partial differential equations. So that kind of all goes in there. So it's really kind of something that needs kind of a um, really kind of joint effort from a lot of the, the mathematicians that, that we have. So uh, a particular kind of topic that's at the forefront at the moment that has, um, is getting a lot of um, current interest is, for example, machine learning, and in particular, deep learning. Uh, so from a mathematical point of view, um, there's still a lot of like, really fundamental mathematical questions that are uh, open, and kind of a really fundamental understanding of how these methods um, work is something that's kind of still lacking, it's just kind of developing uh, at the moment. So there are, for example, some theoretical questions on kind of just guaranteeing that your predictions actually are correct within, within a certain kind of error uh, tolerance. And there's also the questions just on the computational side. So um, applying these in methods, which, uh, sorry, applying these in um, areas which are really um, kind of um, um, in kind of physical systems, uh, there's still a lot of questions there, so if you kind of just apply these methodologies without um, taking into account the structure that you have in these physical systems can often lead to spurious or unphysical um, predictions. So if you, for example, apply these to systems with turbulence or kind of complex structures like that, you really have to think about how to make these things computationally efficient as well. So there's computational questions as well as a lot of theoretical questions that need answering. Well, what I also find fascinating about this topic is that it's actually not only observational data, it's also computational data. Right? I mean, this was already mentioned by both of you now. Um, but, I mean, merging t these two sources is really very much unique also in engineering, right? Because they have these very complex models and we don't want to lose them. We want to now combine them in a really good way with modern tools for machine learning and statistics. So I think that's a, a fascinating, for me, very fascinating edge of the problem, I mean, of the program. So to address some of the challenges um, and to facilitate impact, as part of the program, we have organized these deep dive sessions. So what exactly they are depends a little bit on, on, on the deep dive session and who's in charge of organizing it. Generally, what it means is that we just choose a particular challenge or a particular thematic focus for two weeks so that people know that you know, in, in that time, this is kind of the topic that we'll be looking at. And then we've asked experts in, in that field to kind of organize the deep dive session for, for those two weeks. So as I said, what exactly that looks like depends a little bit on, on the organizer and what they think will work best. 
Usually it does involve some introductory talks, so we've had some deep dive sessions where the first day was um, a couple of talks kind of introducing the topic and introducing open challenges, or we've had some where there's been a talk every day kind of talking about different topics. So usually it does involve some talks, but there's also plenty of time for discussions, so usually people um, kind of break into smaller groups to discuss kind of things that um, they've picked up on in the talks that they maybe have common interests that they didn't kind of realize before and so there's also a lot of um, um, discussions there. So in general the deep dive sessions kind of just provide kind of an open collaborative uh, environment where people kind of just get together uh, and maybe learn about these uh, new challenges or so not everybody um, who's participating in the program will know about all of these challenges before so they might be learning something new or they might be experts kind of learning um, and getting new, new collaborations out of these deep dives. Um, so we've had a um, range of topics um, addressed in the deep dives. So we've had some on more kind of classical topics such as structural health monitoring in mechanical engineering. So uh, even though that is kind of a classical topic, um, the kind of um, development in sensor technology and kind of this vast amount of data that we have now really does open up a lot of new possibilities. Um, for example, in um, monitoring the um, kind of health of an airplane and kind of trying to detect damage and things like that is something that um, might not be possible to do with all the data that they have if you then know how, how to analyze the data and actually figure out um, if there is a damage um, from that data. Um, other deep dives that we've had uh, have been more kind of very modern topics. So we are having one on uh, machine learning and fluid dynamics. That's coming up, so that is a very modern topic. Um, we've also had a deep dive on um, energy, um, so both on energy storage and um, um, kind of designing the, the grids and, and uh, that. That has been very um, successful, so there were people from National Grid that came and kind of presented their um, open challenges in this uh, deep dive. And there's also, uh, after that, already been kind of follow-up meetings, so this deep dive kind of really catalyzed the discussions and what challenges there are and really brought together people from very different areas, so from statistics and, and engineering, really brought them together and, and kind of catalyzed the discussion so that there's now um, follow-up plans to kind of address these challenges. So first of all, it's very nice to have a six-month program because it actually takes quite a bit of time to develop a common language, and Arisa already mentioned that we have the deep dives to promote these ideas. But once you have developed these common language, and the engineers are willing to actually expose their problems and not just their successes, um, then uh, you can look at the methods they have and uh, extract sort of the um, mathematical structures of the problems and the algorithms they're using, and then hopefully improve of them. And then become, they become very transferable, so you can go from one engineering application to another one, but you can also go away from engineering applications and say maybe that's useful in geosciences. And, um, and we've seen this several times, and it's a, I think it's a huge success of mathematics, the transferability. But then, of course, the final step has also to be taken that you then go back to the engineers and uh, tell them you know, about the methods you have. And then they have to say, can they actually apply them? Or maybe you have to further modify them. Um, anyway, so this, this um, uh, uh, you know, fantastic possibility of uh, applying concepts we hopefully develop over the next six months, not only engineering, but as I said, in science um, and elsewhere. Engineering um, is unique in, in a way because um, it has a control and optimization perspective, which you, for example, don't find if you're like a meteorologist where you more say, I want to do predictions. Or if you're a scientist, you want to explain something. I mean, the tools generally are again the same, or you have lots of data you want to use and you want to extract it in a, or use it in an optimal way. But as I said, engineering is unique. Uh, from my perspective, because as I said, it has this um, optimization perspective um, in addition to predictions and trying to explain how things work. So I think in terms of the impacts both in the short term, medium and longer term, uh, the first one is clearly going to be collaborations across disciplines. And that's disciplines within the mathematical sciences, within the statistical sciences and within the engineering sciences. And then between all of those as well. And I think that that's one of the, the, the key uh, aspects to this is, is really ensuring a multidisciplinarity uh, that leverages the, the advances uh, that we will see in the mathematical uh, and statistical sciences. As Sebastian has said, 
Um, this goes beyond engineering to, for example, the geosciences, where here in Cambridge we have the British Antarctic Survey uh, looking at some of the uh, crucial uh, environmental problems uh, dealing with mitigating and adapting to, to climate change. And a lot of the questions uh, that they are seeking to answer uh, all have a data-driven um, perspective, uh, but the need for the mathematical and the statistical uh, underpinnings to make sense of, of that data in informing policy and so on. So I think those collaborations uh, are going to have a, wide, a widespread impact. I think also uh, the other type of impact is that data-driven engineering, uh, Cambridge University Press uh, has already established uh, an international journal in what they have called data-centric uh, engineering. And I think that that will be another uh, organ for the impact uh, at an international level uh, that this programme uh, will have. So short-term, medium-term, long-term collaborations across multiple disciplines and sub-disciplines in the mathematical sciences, the engineering sciences and beyond, and also applications uh, and deployments uh, of solutions to some of the, the biggest challenges that we face, whether it be climate, uh, whether it be net zero, uh, what have you. So I'm very much looking forward to spending time here at the Isaac Newton Institute and having the time to speak with people, interact with uh, various mathematicians, various statisticians, various engineers, uh, and look at some of the problems that we've described, some of the challenges that, that we've described in our deep dives, uh, and, and really taking the opportunity to, to, to benefit from the, the great environment that, that we have here at the Isaac Newton Institute. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to welcoming our Rothschild and Turnekirk fellows that we have for the program. So we really managed to get some uh, leading experts in the, in the field to come. And I'm very much looking forward to them spending time here and uh, yeah, enlightening us with, with their insights. Um, I'm also very much looking forward to continuing the discussions that I've had. So I'm, I'm here for the um, full six months and I've already had some interesting discussions with new people that I met here. Um, and we're, we're working on something together and they'll come back to, to work on this more, so I'm very much looking forward to that as well. Well, and I am very much enjoying already and looking forward to it, even more so in the future, uh, the, the interactions with uh, young scientists that uh, are here at the program and hopefully we'll pick up these sort of ideas that come across or will be exposed here. And also the mix of uh, mathematicians and engineers that we have here, I mean, it's really uh, very stim uh, stimulating.